Welcome to the Title 5 tutorial for Adobe InDesign CS3. InDesign is a desktop publishing application useful for creating uh, documents like magazines, brochures, uh, newspapers, or really any kind of a handout or document that has a lot of graphics and the layout of the text is important. Um, you probably want to know why you would want to use InDesign instead of something like Microsoft Word and the reason for that is that Word can sometimes do funny things if you're working with a lot of graphics, uh, change the spacing of the text, and um, it kind of be difficult to work with. Uh, Word is real useful for documents that are mainly text-based, like letters, resumes, um, lists, uh, anything that, that's primarily text and doesn't have a lot of graphics. Word is great for that. But InDesign gives you a lot more options for working with graphics and text, and they're a lot easier to manipulate. Um, without messing up the the flow of your document. So you can find InDesign by clicking on Start, All Programs, finding your Adobe Design Standard CS3 folder, and then locating Adobe InDesign CS3. So let's go back into InDesign for a moment. And the first screen that you'll see when you open InDesign is this uh, Getting Started page. And from here you can either create a new document, a new book, a new library, um, some other sort of document from another template. There's quite a few options to choose from. If you already started an InDesign document, any of those will be listed here. But for this basic tutorial, we're just going to go with a new document. And you'll get a page layout screen where you can set up uh, the width, height, uh, if you have columns, margins, uh, your basic page layout. And the first thing that you might notice is that there's no inches listed anywhere here. The default unit for measurement for InDesign is picas and points. So when you see the width and you have 51 P0, the 51 is pica and the 0 is points. There are 12 points in a pica and about 6 picas in an inch. So when you see 51 here, that's about 8.5 inches. The height's about 11 inches. So this is just your standard letter size. So you'll notice that the InDesign layout, the interface is very similar to Photoshop. On the left side you have all of your tools. You have your selection tool, text tool, and frame tool, and a bunch of other tools for InDesign. Um, up above you have the options, and these change depending on what tool you have selected. So for example if you select the text tool, you'll notice you'll get options related to text, such as the, uh, the font size, line spacing uh, for paragraphs, you get the alignment, indentation, leading letters, uh, hyphenation, all those kinds of things. Um, on the right hand side you have all your different palettes and these are also similar to Photoshop. Uh, you have layers, um, effects, color swatches, and a couple of other things that are more specific for InDesign. For the actual document you'll notice a couple of different borders here. The black border is the page border. The magenta border is the page margins. You can also create what are called guides in case you want uh, the content of your document to line up uh, along a certain certain line. If you left click in one of the rulers and drag, it creates a guideline. Alright, so if you go over to the left side and click on the left side ruler and drag over, you get a vertical guide. So you can create as many different guides as you want. If you want to get rid of a guide, just click on it and drag it off the page. So when you first go to start up your document, you'll want to set up some layers. So if you go to the right hand side and click on the layers icon, you'll notice you have a layer here called layer 1. Most times when you have a document, you're going to have three main components. And those are going to be text, images, and maybe some kind of a watermark or background uh, image. So let's get those three layers set up. You can have as many layers as you want, but for this demonstration we're just going to use those three. So if you double click the layer name, you can change it. We'll use BG on this one for background. Then we'll click the new layer button. Layer 2, double click, change that to image. And then we'll create one more layer for text. So now we're ready to begin actually putting content onto the page. So select the background layer and we're going to make a background. 
if you go to the rectangle tool on the left side, cursor turns into a couple of crosshairs, and you can drag out the size of the page, and you get this rectangle box. This went a little bit over the margins here, so we'll use the selection tool and shrink it. All right, so now everything looks like it's going to fit in the margins. If you look on the right hand side, there's a icon for swatches. And we'll go with this green color. Now that's going to be pretty dark, especially if somebody tries to print it out. So you have an option for tint. And this works much like the opacity option in Photoshop. We'll drag the slider down to about 10 or so. And that lightens things up.